Hi everyone, this is for the people overseas that do not understand our Aussie slang. Okay, so here we go. One is a beer. Akadaka is ACDC, you know, the one that sings Thunderstruck and, you know, all those cool ones. Ankle Biter is a child, or we call him a rock rat. Uh, Avo is afternoon. Aussie salute is where you have to wave non stop for the flies. Avo is avocado. Bail means to cancel plans. So, like you say, oh, Bruce Bail, Bruce isn't going to turn up. A Barbie is a barbecue, BBQ. Bathers is your swimsuit. Beauty means great. More often, you beat it. You know, you're excellent. Can't wait. Yay. Billabong is a swimming hole, like a pond in a dry riverbed. Billy is a tin that's used to boil water on a uh, fire. You swing it around a couple of times, water doesn't fall out, you put your tea in it. Bloody is very used to extreme to strenuate a point, like you go bloody, you know, bloody oath. You know? Bloody oath, yes, or tr it's true, you're right, mate, bloody oath. Uh, bludger, someone who's lazy, generally someone who relies on others, or when it's someone who relies on the state, they're often called a dull bludger, or someone that will say, um, cigarette, that's a bludger, or, yeah. Bogan, words used for people who are, well, let's say, recknets, if you like to call it. Another one that I use quite often is a gronk. A gronk is similar to a bogan, but a gronk is someone who doesn't shower, um, you know, doesn't brush their teeth, doesn't brush their hair, has no pride in their, um, you know, appearance, they're called gronks. Booze bus is the police vehicle where they have the breathalyzer, they, you know, close all the exit on the highway. Bottle-o is the bottle shop. Brecky is breakfast. Brolly is umbrella. Bruce is an Aussie bloke. Buck Buckley's chance, little chance means you got no hope in hell of getting a dollar out of me. So, like, say, oh, you got five bucks, mate, for a pie. You're going, hey, you got a Buckley's chance in hell, which means no. Nah. Budgie smugglers, speedos, you know those tight little dicky togs. Um, buggered is exhausted. Bush, out in the bush, he's gone bush. He's gone countryside away for a civilized Gone for a walk is another one. Cab strap, cab sovereign uh, cactus is dead broken, it means it's not going to work. Chocker block means full. Um, say you're filling the radiator on the car and, you know, you put go to put the um, antifreeze in and you go, oh, I can't fit that, it's chocker block. A chook is a chicken, which is generally a hot chook that you buy from the supermarket for 10 bucks. Chrissy is Christmas. Siggy is a cigarette. Clucky is feeling maternal, like you're on heat that, you know, you hold a baby and you want a baby. A cobber is a very good friend, all right, me cobber. Coldy is a beer, come over for a few coldies, mates. Coppers are policemen, or we call them jacks as well. And there's another name, but I'm not going to say, it's not too polite. Um, cracks the shits is getting really angry at someone. Crikey is an expression used as ultimate supplies, uh, surprise, you know, like that um, bloke that had Australia Zoo, uh, Steve Irwin that died, he always used crikey when he went to show big animals. Crook, being ill or angry, don't get me crook for getting crook. Don't get crook on me for getting crook. C-U-N-T, the C word. Use when exchanging pleasantries between close friends, family members. If someone calls you the C word in Australia and you haven't done anything to make them angry, then breathe a sigh of relief. It means you've entered the mate zone. We call them with a K as well, K-U-N-T. Dang, someone who's a bit of a nerd or a geek. Now, a dag, sorry, not a dag. Dag, yeah. Dag is someone who's a user, geek, but normally we call them a nerd or a geek. Dags. Trout, oh, uh, Dax, Tracky Dax. You guys, I don't know what you call them in America, but we call them Tracky Ducks, Dax. You know, um, tracksuit pants, sweatpants is Trackies, Tracky Ducks, Tracky Dax. Um, the, the jumper with the hood on it is always called hoodie. Dadi means cool, most Australian Aboriginal people, has been adopted by non indigenous. Dead set means true, defo means definitely, devo is devastated, like you're devastated, you lost your race. A drongo is a fool, don't be a drongo, mate. D 
dunny is a toilet, or brasco is another word for a dunny. Brasco. Dari is another word for a cigarette. Esky is an insulated co- container that keeps things cool, usually beer. Facey, which is Facebook. We call it Scracebook because people only go on there to air their dirty laundry. You wouldn't walk up to your neighbour and tell him you had a shit at 9 o'clock. Fair income, fair income, fair income. Honestly, yeah, honestly. Fleno, fleno, flenny or fleno is a flannel shirt. Flat out, really busy. Flat out like a lizard drinking, as busy as beard. B, footy, football, which is AFL, Aussie rule. It's not soccer. Frothy is beer. F me dead means unfortunate. That surprises. Furfy, rumours or stories that are unpreventable. So, so you, you tell a white lie. And, you know, your parents will go, oh, that's a furphy. G'day is hello. Galar is an Australian cockatoo with a reputation for not being so bright. Hence the Galar. No. Well, Galars are actually intelligent. I've seen Galars pull the cable from mobile phone towers lately. They mustn't like the electromagnetic impulse and they just attack it. I've seen hundreds of Galars attack towers. Gnarly means awesome, often used by surfers, going off, busy, lots of people, angry. Person GC's going off. Good on ya. Good work. Goon. Best ever. Well, it's basically wine in a cheap um, bit of foil um, that you can use for a pillow when you're hungover. So it's the best invention probably made by man Coon. Goon is a cheap box wine that will in February become an inaugural part of your backpacking experience. Hard yakka means hard work. Heaps. Loads. Many. Hoon. Hooligan. Normally driving badly, doing donuts, burnouts, line locks, all that kind of stuff. Iffy, which means that you you've done your job, but it's it's not up to code. It's a bit risky or unreasonable. Nickers is female underwear. Lappy is a laptop. Larrikin is someone who's always up for a bit of laugh, a harmless prankster. Gets a bit of grog in them, they become larrikin. Legging, legless is someone who is really drunk and keeps falling over. Lollies is sweets. Maccas is McDonald's. It's not Mickey D's, it's McDonald's. Maccas, we call it. Manchester is sheets, linens, etc. If you're from England, finding a department within a shop called Manchester could seriously confuse you. Mongrel, someone who's a bit of an arsehole. A mozzie is mosquito, no drama, no problem, it's okay. No worries, no problem, it's okay. No walkers, it's truly a strain worry. Say no worries. Nutty means naked. Um... Or, your birthday suit is another word for naked, like show us your birthday suit. Outback, interior Australia, the outback is more remote than these areas named in the bush. Pash to kiss, um, piece of piss, easy, piss off, means go away, get lost, piss up, early, get together in Australia, meet social occasions, it's like a party, get drunk, piss to urinate, gotta go have a piss, pissed, intoxicated, totally drunk, pissed off, annoyed. Rack off is a less offensive way to tell someone to F off. Wrapped, which means you're very happy. You reckon? For sure, you know, like, reckon, like, something you've done, you know, you reckon. A rally, rello, is relatives. Ripper, you little ripper, that's fantastic, mate. Roo rat, someone who enjoys sex maybe a little bit too much. Our uh, root rats, you know, or we call them a rabbit. Um, rooted which means tired or broken, you know, you get home from work, nah, too rooted to do anything, mate. Runners, trainers, sneakers, um, snagger, which is sandwiches, servo, service station, garage, uh, shark biscuit, kids at the beach, Sheila is a woman, um, she'll be apples, everything will be alright, shoot through, to leave, sick, awesome, that's really sick. Sicky, a day off work, or to pull a sicky would be a day off when you're actually too sick. So, like, you've been partying all weekend, and you ring up Monday, too sick, and chuck a sicky, you know, and then you, <laughs> they end up drinking again. A slab is a carton of beer. Skull, a dip to down a beer. Smoko is a cigarette bake break. Snag is a sausage. Stiffy is an erection. Stoked, happy, please. Strayer is a strayer. Struth, an exclamation of a surprise. So... Struth, that's pretty crazy. A stubby is a hold bottle of beer. A stubby holder is used so your hands don't get cold when holding your beer and it stops your beer from getting warm. Stuffed is tired. Sunny is a sunglass. A swag is a single bed you roll up a bit like a sleeping bag. Tea is dinner. Tinny is a can of beer or a small boat. 
thongs flip-flops don't be alarmed if you're new to australia and your friends ask you to wear thongs to the beach they're not saying g-string they mean flip thongs shoes on your feet they are most likely expressing the concern of the hot sand on your delicate feet and yes the sand burns the shit out of your feet true blue is a general in australia tucker food bush tucker ends up to be found in the outback seas which he grabs um there's also another thing for your esky like your, your deep freezer they call them a tucker box Two up is gambling game paid by the Anzacs. Um, UIE, you take a U turn when driving. You up yourself, stuck up, whoop whoop in the middle of nowhere. He lives in the whoop whoop. Yeah, you use. Use is a plural of use. Okay. So, togs is swimming. Sh- swimming. Your females in the bronzer is tanned. Barbie is barbecue. Chinwag is a chap. A chat. A furphy is a short white lie. A drongo is someone who is six pack short of a carton. A noggin is <laughs> six pack short of a carton. Um. Okay, so this is what the money in Australia looks like. Well, the notes. We used to have two and one dollar coins but they were gone by 1989 they bought two dollar coins in so a five is an echidna a 10 is a blue tongue a 20 is a red back a 50 is a pineapple and a green hundred is a turtle okay so we got echidna blue tongue red back pineapple and turtle so a couple other ones are cobber is your friend, mate friend. Power or halt means to do the bolt or some another one is tomato sauce. Um a bogan is a bum on the doll. A gronk is similar to a bum. Okay, so here's where I meant mention bogan, someone who's not very um sophisticated. Bathers a swimsuit, bail to cancel plans. Chocobock 4, I mentioned these ones on the other side that I saw. Crook means I'm being ill or a criminal. He's a crook. Dax in tracky Dax, trousers. Defo means definitely. Drongo is a fool. Don't be a drongo, mate. Dunny is toilet. Or brasco is another word for toilet. G'day is hello. Galar is not being bright, stupid person. Gnarly, awesome, going off. Good on ya. Hard yak, lots of work. So, we've seen most of these in the other one. Wendy is another one for someone that Americans seem to call Karens. We call it Wendy's over here, and we have done for a long time. Okay, so here's some more. An Ambo is an ambulance driver. Milko is a milkman. Nasha is the national services of military military services. Arello is a relative. Servo is a gas station. A vego is a vegetarian. Smoko is a short break for a smoke, generally a 15 minute first break. Defo means definitely. Muso is a musician. Prego is pregnant. Rego is registration of a vehicle. Arvo is an afternoon, Evo is evening, Avo is avocado, Agro is aggression, and Sipo is an American. So the word bogan is a redneck, which is a slang word born from the US. Redneck definition often describes an uncultured person, undefined speech, behavior, clothing, etc. Apples should be right, it'll be alright. Fair income, confirming the truth of a sentence. Banana bender. Someone from Queensland. Yes, I am a banana bender. Okay. Dog's breakfast is a complete mess. Big smoke, large city like Sydney. No worries, it's no problem. Face one, face off ones is drunk. G'day, hi, hello. Give it a bull, which means make it a try. Grinning like a short fox, absolutely satisfied and happy. Good on you, good for you. <laughs> Liquid laugh is a puke vomit. Piece of piss, very easy. Easy task, London to brick. Express it certainly or high probability. Good oil, good information. Okay, so ta is thank you. We always say ta. We always say cheers or cheerio to say goodbye. So a sheila is a woman, female, divided from the Irish girl's name seal. It's now rarely used because it's considered dog derogatory. So US versus Australia. Mouth, cake holder, child, ankle biter, man, bloke, woman, sheila. <laughs> 
Brecky breakfast barbecue, mate and friend, crikey, an explosion of supply, cake hole is your mouth, ankle biter is a young child, sport child, other afternoon, bottle low is a liquor shop, so we've been through these, so bush telly is what you watch for a night out when you're camping. Yeah, telly before, but bush telly, that's a new one. Basically, when you're camping, you can't watch traditional television, so you watch the bush telly, the campfire, the stars, or just the bush. So, US versus Australia. Friend is mate, Arvo. Afternoon is Arvo. Breakfast is brekkie. Barbecue is Barbie. Thanks is tar. So, lippy is lipstick, biggie is biscuits, sunny is sunglasses, mushy is mushroom, defo is definitely, cabby is a taxi driver, roo is a kangaroo, ace is excellent, very good, your booty is fantastic. So, we've been through some of these. Joey is a baby kangaroo, hard work, oldies is your parents, what's the Johnny Dory means what's going on, Tucker equals food, Sky Gator is a plane. Bruce, an Australian bloke, said that. Crikey Mighty is a snake. Bouncy Mouse is a kangaroo. Pash is a passionate kiss. So, avo, avocado, no, US versus Australia. Avocado versus avo. Taxi driver versus cabo. Sunglasses versus sunny. Liquor store versus fighter low. So, dang, a funny, likable person. Billabong upon a dry river. Um... Fanny is your vagina, not your ass. See, in America, a fanny is your bum. Lappy laptop, lolly sweet, Mac is McDonald's, Australia, Australia, tea, dinner, ya, yeah, you, bludger, a lazy person, present, prezzy, a present, footy, football, snag, saucy, sausage, whoop, whoop, the middle of nowhere, dog's breakfast, meat, mess, mad as a cut snake, very angry, dingo's breakfast, no breakfast, Duncan, Unequestably good or genuine, furfy, an almost or improbable story, which means like a white lie. She'll be apples, all right. Liquid laugh, vomit. Um, Bizzo is business. Cactus beaten dead, finish not working. Chewy is chewing gum. Chocky is chocolate. Good day, hello. Polly is politician. Rody is a beer you take with you. A sunbathe. Sunbake is sunbag. A tallie is a seven hundred mil bottle of beer. And here are a few that we don't say. Throw a ship on the barbie. We don't say that. It's just a myth. They're called prawns and we, they're pre-cooked and we don't throw them on the barbecue. Get a dog up you. No one uses that. Particularly it means to have an alcoholic beverage. Uh, got a face like a twisted Marley root. This one's obviously an insult because the Marley roots were quite beautiful as part of the tree. But not as beautiful as a human place. Face. Maybe a person in Australia uttered this once while looking over their vast brown lands, but since there's been radio silence on this one, a sheep station is so expensive, so if you're playing for sheep stations, you're playing for high stakes, but it also means the opposite, because strange things is not all rash rational playing for sheep stations. If it fits like a stocking on a sheep chook slip, apparently this means something fits really well, but I'm still trying to figure out if the chickens have lifts <laughs> and how you can possibly put a stocking on them. Shove your damper hole. It means shut your poly hole. It's a useful as a waterproof tea bag. Yes, I have heard that one. As dry as a dingo's donger. This is allegedly a uh, saying Australians used to describe when something's really dry. Fig jam. We use that quite often. It means, um, fuck, I'm good, just ask me. Now, there's a band from um, Brisbane that has a song that went really high numbers for that. So hungry I could cap I could eat the crutch out of a low flying duck. So fig jam, fuck on good just ask me. Excuse my language of swearing. Now this one. Fair go, mate. Fair suck of the sauce bottle or fair crack of the whip. Now this saying gets used quite a lot. Made famous by the ill fated farmer Prime Minister Kevin Rudd who enjoyed using Australian slang to speak to the electorate and often pleaded with a fair suck. The phrase generally means that you want to be treated fairly. Fair suck was coined by struggling Australian families who shared droppings of tomato sauce to flavour their meat. Such was the hard life they want. Life that they all wanted was an equivalent to suck in the fields. They needed a fair crack of the whip. Fair go, mate. No worries, should be right. It refers to the national satosum that suggests everyone she will turn out fine in the end. This being the case, there's no pr real point in worrying about anything. Have a Captain Cook. A look, a brief inspection. It's apparent honour the first Brits of map Eastern Australia. 
Captain James Cook. He wasn't a captain, he was a master. So he skipped the endeavour after landing in Botany Bay. What's the Johnny Dory? Johnny Dory is a fish found in Sydney Harbour and it's great grilled with lemon and pepper or deep fried. It also rhymes with the story. So when people want to know what's going on, they're requesting the goss gossip. They ask what Johnny Dory is. A few stubbies short of a six pack. Now I said that before. A few sandwiches short of a picnic or a noodle short of a stir fry. A six pack has evolved to a means that fits abdomens, but long ago six pack was and still is a group of beers where one perceived to be in a little bit slow, more feeling under the weather. They are actually quite dumb. They're a few stubby short of a six pack, not the full quid. For those who don't speak about money or alcohol, they're a few sandwiches short of a picnic or a noodle short of a stir fry. Tell him he's driven. Given the airtime by Michael Cart in the castle, when you advise someone involved in a business transaction to tell the can of how he's dreaming, you're suggesting that the other side is not offering a fair deal. Dog's breakfast is messy, but doesn't refer to food. It's often used by parents to describe their kids' chaotic lives, not in order shambles. No thought, just a bit of ex everything is a dog's breakfast. We'll wrap your laughing gear around that. Well, some suggest that you can laugh on the inside, well, but your laughing gear is your mouth, so... When you wrap your laughing gear around something, you eat it. Rip snorter, someone playing a good game of snort, having a blinder, or something that is especially good. Better than a ham sandwich, better than to kick up the backside, something that is better than nothing, even if you pay peanuts, pay rate that attracts monkeys. It's better than a kick up the backside. You prefer a fair whack. As things become more worthwhile, they may even be better than a ham sandwich. Buckley's chance, William Buckley was Australia's very own Robinson Crusoe, a man who escaped a convict ship during the first attempt to settle Melbourne in 1803. Three decades later, colonels returned to find a tattooed two-metre-tall long-bearded man with a half-Aboriginal children who spoke their tribe. He picked up English within days. They soon realised it was Buckley who was given a pardon and used as a peacemaker between white and blacks. But Buckley's local knowledge led settlers to indigenous tribes through modern-day Victoria have advocated cooperation with Aboriginals after the 1840s. Decades of indigenous slaughter saw locals massacred, and it was maximum. They just came in and killed them all. It was terrible. It was said that he had Buckley's chance of making peace. Buckley sent a letter of, of pact on his life, uh, led a part of his life on a poor loner in Tasmania, there was a concerted lobby for the government to give him pension for his service to the Connolly. Connolly. Once again, he had Buckley's. Pull the wool over your eyes is similar to I'm hungry, I could eat a horse, chase the jockeys. This one derives from the bushy history of earning a buck around a woolshed meant people had to be given an honest day's work, eight hours work, eight hours pay, and eight bob a day. Chance of the union work. Australians had to be genuine with each other so they could get all their fair share of a spuds potatoes. If someone was being a little sheepy, dishonest, or spinning a yarn, they're trying to pull the wool over your eyes. Dog's eyes is much conjuncture about what really goes on inside the national staple of meat pie. Is it beef? Is it kangaroo? The important thing is that it rhymes, so when you're having a pie, it's looking back at you in a canine kind of way. It's a dog's eye. That could be really the funny, runny meat filling. Bastards often used to refer to the British or anyone who doesn't pay a flair. Play fair, the latest Australian to be shot by an English firing squad in the Boer War. Breaker Mount famously shouted the, his last words, Shoot straight, you bastards. During the infamous 1932-33 Bloodline Cricket Size Series, English captain Douglas Jarline walked to the cricket Australian dressing room, complained that he was being called a bastard. An Australian cricketer supposedly asked his team, which one of you bastards called a bastard a bastard? In politics, the third party, the Australian, the third party, the Australian Democrats, was formed in the 1970s to keep the bastards honest. <laughs> Toads, banana benders, cockies, and sand grapers, cowroaches. Now, cockroaches are people from New South Wales. Mexicans are people from Victoria. And cane toads are people from Queensland. Their favourite ways, Aussies disparage those who live elsewhere. Tropical Queensland has many more bananas and cane toads than people, so they're branded banana benders or cane toads. Queenslanders get their own back by calling Sydney Siders cockroaches in honour of the omnipresent nuclear moon pest found around the Harbour City. South Australians, particularly early settlers, partake in the delicacy of crow eating, while Western Australia spend their lives groping sand, sand groupers. Put a sock on it, tell someone to shut up. 
Okayobo, the loudmouth who's a larrikin who loves the sound of his own boast, is a yobo, often a bit of a troublemaker. A yobo typically has a deep Australian twang to his access, in which he is an oka. No, we don't throw a sheep on the barbie, sorry. <laughs> it's a stereotype. Paul Hogan introduced the word to the phrase and progress invited countless tourists to come over. Australians aren't in the habit of cooking. Small people or shrimp refers to a yabby or simply a prawn and it's way to invite someone to your house. Where you throw a shrimp or a snag, that's a sausage on the barbie. Do the Harry. Now I mentioned Harold Holt do the bolt before. So yeah, I said Harold Holt do the bolt. Harold Holt was Prime Minister who disappeared on the Victorian coast in 1967. He did the bolt. Some say responsibilities of the Prime Minister. Some say secretly communist politician was abducted by a Chinese submarine or UFO. More likely he was caught in the deadly currents washed out to sea from Chevrolet Beach near Port Sea. His body, however, has never been found, so anyone doing disappearing act is called the Harold Holt. Or simply when you mosey on, get the hell out of here, you do the bolt. Or the Harold Holt. Or simply say, do the Harry. Six of one and half a dozen of the other. It's not <laughs> It's not quite you're damned if you do, damned if you don't, nor it's being caught between the devil and the deep blue sea. It's when 50, 50 odds and whatever the decision you make will not likely affect the outcome of the six, situation. Six of one, half a dozen of the other means you'll end up with a dozen anyway, unless, of course, the, the baker's dozen. Not pissing on someone when they're on fire means you don't really care about someone even if they're fire, you wouldn't do it do them a service by pissing on them and putting the fire out. Crikey blimey, emphasisms used to communicate emotion of surprise. Uh, oi, oi for drongos and galas, change it three times, Ozzy 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 is perhaps the world's cheeriest national cry, but in normal use it's mouth when you disagree with someone who is doing or in conveying a normal annoyance to get someone's attention or when you're being a drongo or galar in fact not native birds but someone who has rocks in their head and doesn't know what they're doing blokes and sheilas mentioned that before bushman a handkerchief not really a handkerchief at all but using your hands delicately drain the snot from your nose so i'll leave this link with you in the description qe is a loud aboriginal cry in the outback that tells you where you are assuming that you're within Kui range so you're not in Kui or something where nobody can hear it Walkabout is another piece of language, much ancient itself, where it's derived from indigenous, indigenous culture. Natives enjoy going walkabout, as do other Australians who are travelling, whether it's backpacking, backpacking around Asia or, or following the harvest at home, they're going walkabout. One for the road is a last drink, going home, said at the bars and friends. Houses before going home, the saying hasn't been eradicated by the increased amount of random breath towns as alcohol. Sadly, it hasn't. Frog and toad. Okay, so I'll leave a link in the description. I just wanted to share these quickly. I know this is different from my usual videos, but I just wanted to give you something that's not, you know, focused on all the craziness in the world and give you a bit of a distraction. So wherever you are in the world, thanks for watching. Much love. Raise your vibrations. Bye-bye.